most wanted man in Guyana has been arrested in Suriname. His name is Shaquan Allen, aka is we. Viewers and subscribers, today in this video, we are going to address the most wanted man in Guyana for the past couple of years and why he's arrested. And we are also going to play a video where a multimillionaire in Guyana, aka a social media top influencer, this person is very well known in Guyana who is exposing Guyanese critics, Barra Jagdio and the old PPP administration. He is exposing the reason why every Guyanese is not getting a stipend every month or every three months and he's going to explain the reason. You are going to be surprised. But before we start this video, if you're new to this YouTube, smash the subscribe button leave a thumbs up and leave a comment and let's get this video started most wanted man in Guyana has been arrested in Suriname Shaquan Allen aka is we and the reason why he has been arrested is for the unaliving of his girlfriend and the, the reason why this case is so disturbing is not that only he did some disturbing thing to his girlfriend makes she come unalive he also placed her in a shallow grave very sad and he disclosed this information to his girlfriend's sister because according to the news RIP to his girlfriend or sister was having an intimate relationship with the suspect so right now presently the girlfriend's sister is in the lockups, facing charges, and Shaquan Allen, aka is we, has been running and has been on the wanted list for the past couple of years. So he has been apprehended in Suriname and has been extradited to Guyana to face this murder charge. People in Linden is going to feel more at ease seeing that this suspect is in police custody if you're new to this youtube channel like i stated subscribe leave a thumbs up and leave a comment we are going to play the video with glenn lal yeah that is the person we all know who is glenn lal who is exposing Guyanese critics and barajagio especially the reason why he is stating that every Guyanese who is not working directly with the oil industry should get a money so check out this video and watch it right out so you will get a better understanding of Glenn Lal argument of the story we just normally hear the point of view from the government where Glenn Lal have his point of view because he's going to start some political party so check him out and subscribe, like, and share. This is Guy News News. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Nowhere on earth you will find any government hiding the inflated bills from the population. Nowhere on earth a country, a country, don't have meters at the pump to monitor the oil being pumped. Nowhere on earth these projects are not ring-fenced. Taxes are not paid. No way or not, the clean-up money is held by oil companies for 40 years. No way on earth, the U.S. billions spent on project costs are secret. Nowhere. No way or not, there isn't an unlimited parent company guarantee from an oil spill. Again, nowhere on earth the citizens' livelihoods are being destroyed by the oil companies and there is no compensation for them. Like the fishermen, the agriculture sector with the crops burning with the flaring, heat wave rising, Putting tremendous burden 
on the citizens with the need for air conditioning units in them house, in them offices, even in the dark pen. No way these things can happen on earth but Guyana. Where are you guys getting the money from to take care of all them additional bills and what you're losing in all the crops? Where? Handing six project being robbed two, three times. Your country debt and you silent in this land. The lady said, it is a parasitic arrangement with the leaders. <laughs> My good friend Lumumba said the same thing. Parasitic. Yes. They come like parasites ready to suck. Suck every drop of your blood and eat the flesh. She called it wholesale thievery across Africa. Is what happening in Guyana. It is worse in Guyana. In every sector. And every day. Oh, are you complaining about cost of living high? Are you can't buy milk and books for your children go to school? She said, treat Africa fairly. Trade with them fairly. What she left out. <laughs> uh, what she left out, uncle. They are treating Africans fairly. And trading with them fairly. But that is done only with the leaders and not the citizens of the country. <laughs> yes, that is how fairly and, and, and squarely they're treating Niger with the leaders. Isn't that what is going on in Guyana, man? With ExxonMobil? Hmm? You accepting an estimate for a project of 10 and 13 billion US JOSA? And all you life, you struggling with debts of 2 and 3 billion US? Now it reached 4 billion? And your government not checking these project costs with a fine teeth comb, Uncle and Auntie? Huh? Knowing that they are dealing with criminals and gangsters of the highest order on earth today? <laughs> oh, them, them have to trade and treat the leaders right and beautiful so they can turn a blind eye on those project costs. What you say, Uncle and Auntie? Oh, Arikana focused on France a lot. And you may want to know why France alone she singled out. Uncle, Auntie, France is like England. France is like England used to be for Guyana. The British controlled Guyana and France controlled several countries in Africa. This is why she spoke so much about France. France is the country that gave them independence. France gave, gave them aid. France buy their products. And only France can buy their products at 80 cents. <laughs> oh, 80 cents. Taking advantage before slavery, after slavery, and now after independence. So when I hear think people free in this world, they were never free. Now today, they are truly beginning to free themselves from France and the other foreign slave masters.
of Clan Auntie. Me and you. Let me repeat this thing. Me and you got to start doing the same thing now. Now, now, now in this country. This moment I'm talking about. We got to start freeing ourselves. Auckland Auntie, there is so much money in this country that everybody can be millionaires overnight, man. The population is very small and the wealth is humongous. Our wealth is developing highways and skyways for every foreign country that have their foot into our land. What are you developing in this land? You developing ulcer from hunger and migraine from stress. We don't want them two patch roads they're boasting about with bar money. Yes, that is the development. Bar money. In which half them is thief out anyway. I wake up this morning again in blackout. This thing so much that I had to call my neighbors to see if them get blackout too. And that nobody's spiting me house alone. Fifty seven years. And it's blackout morning, noon and night across this land this country collected over 20 hundred million US which is 2 billion that could have fixed blackouts once and for all right across this country called Guyana and even Suriname if them got blackout too that 2 billion US could also correct and fix that stink water are you getting through the pipes? But is the bot uncle and auntie? Ask them to show you where, how and what that two billion US was spent on. You might faint. Year after year, for 57 years of independence, people lighting candles and using generation generators if them can afford. I am sick. Yes, I am. Sick to see what they're doing to all of you. Day in, day out in this country. Telling you them building roads, hospitals, and thiefing out trick water the money. Come 2025, uncle. Mm -hmm. Y'all will continue to drink that same stink water and live in blackouts. I know. Oh, 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 oh. Y'all will continue to line up for a once a year crack cash grant. Less than 50 million US for putting our own meter, the oil pumps. To see what those gangsters doing out there. Them spend out that two billion. Twenty hundred million US and didn't install the meters. Is this for real, man? Going on in this land, Joshua? Hmm? Are you gonna continue to live in blackouts, drinking that same stink water? Hear me clearly tonight. Yes, because nothing will change with these. But oh gosh, let me hold back my mouth. When I think we are in trouble, Joshua, we are in the middle of a tragedy. One that is worse than a volcano, a mudslide, floods, and hurricane combined. The name of this national tragedy begins with a man named Barajadeo. And it looks like it's going to end with that same man. This is a man who promised my reporter, the girl, 
the girl that has been highlighting and educating this nation ever since we discovered oil, pointing out all the failures and traps that Guyana should not fall into. Yes, he promised this girl a one and one sit down interview. He promised her repeatedly since December 20, 20, Joshua. As late as two weeks ago, Uncle, she asked him again. This is in 2023. 2023, I'm talking about from 2020, Uncle. And Barajade hasn't found that one hour to sit with her to have a real conversation about what is going on in the oil sector. But, Joshua, but he finds time to sit down with Guyana's clung over and over to talk about Guyana's future. Uncle, Auntie, Friday, he sat down with his clung and I want you guys to listen for yourselves the kind of conversations or discussions he had with this clown. A Bobbition called me and told me, Glenn, we are in great, the greatest trouble ever in the history of Guyana. And begged me to listen to Jack Day, one critic. The man even sent me the clip that I should listen to. <laughs> I listened to Jack Dale. Oh my. Several things after listening to him came to my mind. One of them. Jack Dale driving himself mad. Two. He running scared. Three. He's desperate. Four, he's falling apart, and it is clear he's selling out this country with all of us inside for nothing. When a leader in a, when a leader, uncle, in charge of a U.S. trillion dollar oil sector plus other national priorities, can sit and listen to one. Little comment from a citizen of this country and use that to put a spin to mislead and deceive a nation. We are in we are in a bigger tragedy and disaster all in one, Uncle and Auntie. I could not believe an ex president.